welcome to the third part of the first person tutorial mini series. I'm Steven and this time we'll be looking at how to write some code to move our enemies and then spawn some enemies into the scene. If you haven't seen the previous parts there's a link in the annotation to the site. Feel free to check that out first then come right back here to continue, otherwise let's get stuck in. To start we want to write a script that can be used to move the enemy around an area. Go to the Assets folder, right click and choose Create C Sharp Script and name this script Enemy Underscore Movement. Click on the enemy and then drag the new script into the inspector and it should now be attached to our enemy. Then double click to open the script in the editor of your choice, I'll be using MonoDevelop. Before we start writing code, let me explain how this script will work for a minute. It's going to be a very simple form of AI. The enemy will move in a straight line at a set speed around the area. When they come within distance to an obstacle, they will turn in a random direction and continue moving. This ensures they do not collide with any obstacles and gives them the appearance of having some form of intelligence. The enemy will be able to detect nearby objects using raycasts, just like how the player makes use of raycasting from the camera, the enemy does this too. To start, we need to create some variables. Type in public float speed equals 3.0f. So this is the speed at which the enemies will move. Next type public float obstacle range equals 5.0f. And this is the distance to the objects before the enemy turns. Then private bull underscore alive. And this checks if the enemy is alive. Then go to the start method. Start runs when an object is initialized. So when an object is created, we set underscore alive to true. Next, we'll go to the update method and type if underscore alive, then transform dot translate zero, zero and speed times time dot delta time. What that does is checks if the enemy is alive. If they are, they continue to move forward. We don't want dead enemies to keep moving. And also using time.delta time, make sure the enemy moves at a steady rate, independent of frame rate. Type ray ray equals new ray transform.position transform.forward. This is creating a ray at the position of our enemy and pointing it in a forward direction. It's like the enemy is looking forward. Then we have raycast hit hit. You might recognize this from the player scripts in the previous parts also. Next we have if physics.spherecast ray, 0.75f, out hit. And just to note, physics.spherecast means the ray has a circumference instead of being a single line. This then accounts for the enemy's entire body and not just a single point. And inside that we have if hit dot distance is less than obstacle range and now we're checking if we are within distance to any obstacles and in that we have float angle equals random dot range minus 110 110 and transform dot rotate zero angle zero and this rotates the player on the y axis about the angle we've called angle which is a random number between minus 110 and 110. Let me close those off. And we also must adjust the enemy's alive state. So when they die, we need to ensure they stop moving. So let's create a method. Type in public void set alive bull alive and then underscore alive equals alive. And this is passing the boolean alive and setting our variable underscore alive to its value. So save the script and go to enemy underscore shot. Inside the got shot method, we will create an instance of enemy underscore movement. Enemy underscore movement behavior equals get component enemy underscore movement. We need to check if the object has the enemy underscore movement script. And if it doesn't, we set a live to false. Then type in if behavior does not equal null, then behavior dot set alive is false. Save this script too and then go back to Unity. Click play and watch the enemy move around the scene. When they come close to an object, they will change direction. We can still shoot the enemy and they will fall over and die. 
Having one enemy isn't exciting though, so let's create a spawn point so we can have multiple enemies appearing within the scene. For some reason the cursor was not recorded in the next section of the tutorial, so I'll attempt to explain things a little more so you can follow along. Sorry for any problems. First thing to do is go to the hierarchy at the left and select the enemy. Drag the enemy into the assets folder at the bottom. You can see the enemy appears here now. This is called a prefab and it is our enemy object. This can now be reused and we can create multiple instances of the enemy. You can see if we drag the enemy prefab into the scene we have another instance. You can now delete the enemy from the hierarchy at the left. Zoom out a little bit to get a better view of the scene. Right click in the hierarchy and select create empty. In the inspector to the left, rename this spawn point. Click the gear in the transform and reset the values so that it is in the center of the scene. Next, we need to create a script to spawn enemies. Right click in the assets folder at the bottom and select create C sharp script. Name it enemy underscore spawn. Double click to open the script and delete the start method. Type in public game object enemy prefab and private game object enemy. Then in the update method we need to type if enemy equals null and this checks if there is no enemy in the scene. If there is no enemy we need to spawn one. So type enemy equals instantiate enemy prefab as game object. This creates an enemy from the prefab. Next type enemy.transform.position equals new vector 3 0 1 0 which then sets the position. Then type float angle equals random.range 0 360 which gets a random angle between 0 and 360 for the enemy to face. And then type enemy.transform.rotate 0 angle 0 which actually sets the direction the enemy faces. Save this script and go back to Unity. Go to the spawn point object and drag the enemy underscore spawn script into the inspector. You will see a space named enemy prefab on the script. Drag the enemy from the assets folder into this space and save the scene and click play to test it. Try shooting the enemy and when you do your nuller will spawn immediately. We can keep doing this and enemies will continue to spawn. And with that we have come to the end of this tutorial. Let's do a quick recap of what we have covered. We have looked at writing a script to move enemies, then giving enemies the intelligence to not crash into walls, and killing enemies, and then spawning enemies into the scene. So thanks again for watching this video, make sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this and I'll see you next time.